Okay, so our last conic section to discuss is the parabola. Uh, this is a shape that you have seen before in uh, previous classes as far as it's a quadratic function. So it's creating that U shape. So there's a couple more technical things we're going to talk about. Uh, you've obviously talked about the axis of symmetry for this, the vertex point. Uh, there's things called the focus, the directrix, the lattice rectum that help create the overall shape for this thing. So the technical definition of a parabola is the curve defined by the set of all points in a plane that are the same distance from a given point called the focus and the given line called the directrix. I mean, if I were to go back to the right here, if I just pick a random point over here, and just call this point C, the distance that point C is to the focus versus the directrix is going to be constant. So that's the same distance there. Um, so the equation you have to worry about, it's either going to be y equals a x minus 8 squared plus k, which you should recognize as the vertex form of a quadratic, but that's where it's going up or down when a is positive versus a is negative. The horizontal parabola is the same idea, but it's an x equals now, x equals a y minus k squared plus h. You got to be very careful with the horizontal one. Everyone is used to putting the x coordinate inside the parentheses there for a parabola. Here it's the y coordinate of the vertex going inside the parentheses for that expression. Um, it goes right when A is positive, left when A is negative. And then you have the different options there. Uh, axis of symmetry is always going to go through the vertex point. X equals H when it's vertical. Y equals K when it's horizontal. You have the focus point, which is H comma K. And then we're adjusting either K or H by a positive 1 over 4A. Uh, adjusted K, the Y coordinate when it's vertical. H, the X coordinate when it's horizontal. And then the director is actually the same thing as the focus with the adjusting value, but it's a minus 1 over 4a instead of a plus. All right, so those are the different key things we'll be looking for. So when it comes to writing the equations, a couple options you're going to go with, you're going to need to figure out the vertex and the value of a. That's what you need. And typically the focus and director is how we find that value of a. Um, we kind of almost have to be given the vertex to begin with. In fact, everything we'll deal with, I'll give you the vertex to start and I'll give you the focus and I'll give you the directrix to then use the vertex to find the value of A. So here our vertex is negative 4, negative 8. Um, so in order to figure out whether it's horizontal or vertical, we have to compare the vertex to the focus and the value that changes tells you the direction we're going in. So the Y coordinate is changing, so there's a vertical parabola. So it's Y equals A and then it's going to be X minus H, so X plus 4 squared minus 8. So the key now is finding the value of A. And that's where the focus comes into play. Because the formula for the focus when it's vertical was H comma K plus 1 over 4A. So this negative 12 halves matches the, one, the K plus 1 over 4A bit. So negative 12, 25 halves equals K, which is negative 8, plus 1 over 4A. So the negative 8 is really a negative 16 over 2. That common denominator there, which gives us a positive 9 halves when we set up our, um, we move it over there, or sorry, negative 9 halves. Uh, when we add 16 halves over to that. Cross multiplying, we get negative 36a equals 2. So dividing, we get negative 1 18th for a. So our equation is y equals negative 1 18th x plus 4 squared minus 8. And there we go. Um, so that's the format we're going to use for the vertex and focus. The key is identifying the direction it is, so then you can properly use the correct equation to identify the value of A from the focus. Um, and again, we identify the orientation. Similar idea here. What is, what is changing? I go from 9 to 73 over 8, so the x value is changing. Therefore, this is horizontal. And that's x equals A y minus k squared plus h which means it's going to be x equals a y plus 3 squared plus 9. Be very careful. The common inclination is to say it's y minus 9 squared and then minus 3 at the end because you're used to, for a parabola, used for a quadratic, filling in the x coordinate into the expression that's being squared. So you've got to be very careful with that. The focus, again, the formula tells us it's h plus 1 over 4a comma k. So again, this is what's changing. That's matching to the h plus 1 over 4a. So it's 73 over 8 equal to 9 plus 1 over 4a. Now 9 is really 72 over 8, so we get a 1 8 when we subtract it over. Cross multiplying tells us 4a equals 8, therefore a is a positive 2.
So x equals 2. y plus 3 squared plus 9 is our standard form, uh, the vertex form, really, of our parabola. All right, so that's the vertex and focus. Vertex and directrix, same idea. Um, now, because there's not a coordinate point there, you're going to have to use your knowledge of the equation formulas to know whether or not this directrix tells us it's horizontal versus vertical. And the easiest way to tell, the value of x or y tells you whether or not it's going to be horizontal or vertical. So it says x equals, that means it's going to be x equals for our equation. And again, there's our h and k. So we would say this is x equals a y minus 10 squared minus 9. And then as for the directrix, well, we know the directrix formula for horizontal is going to be h minus 1 over 4a. Same idea as the focus, just a minus instead of a plus. So we'd have negative 19 over 2 equal to negative 9 minus 1 over 4a. Negative 9 is negative 18 over 2, so we get a negative 1 half. It was negative 1 over 4a. So negative 4a equals negative 2. a is a positive half. So we get 1 half y minus 10 squared minus 9 for the equation of our uh, parabola. And so it's all about being careful with your formulas um, and making sure you're using the correct orientation and then you're doing the correct either minus 1 over 4a or plus 1 over 4a based on directrix versus focus. Again, the directrix is just simply y equals 8. This tells me that we are dealing with a vertical Parabola, so it's y equals a x minus h squared plus k. This is your more traditional one that you're probably used to writing it as, so it's just going to be x minus 2 squared plus 10. As for a, again, the directrix is based on k minus 1 over 4a when it's vertical. So we would say 8 equals k, which is 10, minus 1 over 4a. So that would give us a negative 2 equals negative 1 over 4a. I want to think of that negative 2 as negative 2 over 1, so I can cross multiply. Negative 8a equals negative 1. a is a positive 1 8. So our equation, y equals 1 8, x minus 2 squared plus 10. Okay, so those, similar to what we've done with all the other shapes, those are the two pieces of information I'm going to give you to then write the equation, either the vertex or the focus is one type, Vertex and directrix is another type. We also have to complete the square. Now, completing the square with the parabolas, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to want to. Um, you got a couple options there. We need to complete the square first, so we don't need to necessarily move anything around just yet. So I'm just going to leave kind of everything where it currently is. So I'm just going to go, okay, so it's x squared minus 18x. Half of 18 is 9, 9 squared is 81. And then because I added in 81, I need to subtract it in on the same side of the equation to keep it in balance. So this would give me x minus 9 squared plus 2y minus 6 equals 0. Now, to write the equation of the problem, I need to isolate the non-squared variable. So I need to isolate y in this case. So I'm going to subtract the x expression. So it's a negative of x minus 9 squared and then plus 6. And I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I get a negative 1 half in front of the x minus 9 squared, and then a plus 3. So again, I'm not really going to move things around until after I'm done completing the square, and then I'll start moving everything besides the non-squared term over. That's my general strategy. Because um, if I isolate the y first, I get a fraction in front of the x, which I have to factor away, and it kind of gets a little messy that way. Or if I subtract it over, it's now a negative I get to factor away for, but that can also get a little messy. So I'm just going to leave everything where it is and then go from there. Uh, so same idea right here. I'm going to leave it wherever it is here, but I need to factor the two away from the y terms to properly complete that square. But I'm going to leave the x, I'm going to leave the 69 there on the, um, right hand, on the left hand side. Filling the blank, half of 12 is 6, 6 squared is 36. But balancing is not just 36, it's 2 times 36. And again, I'm subtracting it to keep it in balance since it's a positive 2 and a positive 36. Uh, so that gives us 2y plus 6 squared plus x. Uh, this is a negative 72, so that's a minus 3. So x, we can just subtract over the expression. 
and then that over the 3. There's nothing in front of x, so that's as far as that would go. And then that's our equation for the parabola. All right, so again, so you've got a couple choices with how you want to go about completing the square. My general recommendation is leave everything where it is, complete the square, and then move things after you're done doing that. All right, so then the final thing is to graph the parabolas. Uh, graphing your parabolas, that's just a parabola, not hyperbola. The typo on my part. Uh, you need to find the vertex, focus, axis symmetry, and the directrix. Uh, you're then going to plot the vertex. You're not really going to plot the focus and the directrix. And the axis symmetry is just a dotted line going through it, so it's not really necessary to plot. But you're going to plot the vertex. Use the value of A in symmetry to plot two more points. Because you are creating a U shape, either vertically or horizontally. So there's symmetry around, as we call it, axis of symmetry. So we don't need to find two points on our own. We just plot one, and then we let symmetry give us the seconds. Um, so depending upon the equation, we'll kind of determine whether or not how I'm going to go about finding that, those symmet symmetric points. But let's first figure out everything we need to work with here. So our h value is going to be 1, our k value is 3, and our a value is 2. This is clearly going to be a vertical parabola because it's a y equals. Uh, our vertex, as always, is h comma k, so it's 1 comma 3. Our focus, because it's vertical, it's going to be adjusting the y coordinate, so it's going to be 1 comma 3 plus 1 over 4 times a. Uh, so that gives us a 1 eighth there plus the 3. So it's 3 and 1 eighth. If you want to leave it as the mixed number, that's perfectly fine. If you want to write it as a improper fraction, that'd be a 25 eighths. That's also perfectly fine. Wouldn't really recommend the decimal. Uh, depending upon the fraction, the decimal might get rounded off and you'll lose some accuracy. So I would leave it as either the mixed number or the improper fraction. Axis of symmetry, which I'll do as AOS, that is always going to be the um, opposite variable from what our equation is. So it's going to be x equals, and then the x coordinate of the vertex, so x equals 1. Whereas the directrix is going to be the same variable as the equation, so it's going to be a y equals, and now it's going to be, well, same as the focus, but subtracting. So 3 minus 1 over 4 times a. So it'd be 3 minus uh, 1 eighth. So we're going to either write it as the mixed number 2 and 7 eighths, or we can write it as the improper fraction, which would be 23 eighths. Neither the focus nor the directrix is going to be plotted on the graph, so it's not going to really matter too much um, how you write it out as the improper or the mixed number fraction. That's kind of going to be up to you. Now, when it comes to the graph, we're plotting our vertex at 1, 3. And we want to pick a value that's close to um, that vertex point, pick a value for x, because we're saying y equals, so we have to pick a value of x to plug into this. So we want something that's close to that. So I'm plugging in something like, you know, 2. It's pretty close. So y equals 2 times 2 minus 1 squared plus 3. Let me get 1 squared, which is 1. 2 times 1 plus 3 gives us 5. So we're going to plot a point that is just quite simply 2 comma 5. And then based on symmetry, that was to the right of the vertex, so to the left is the same spot. So you'd find 0 comma 5 there, and then we connect them to make our U shape. And there's our graph. Um, something you can also use, if A is an integer, you can go up or down, left or right, if it's horizontal, based on that value of A, and then create your spot there. So like here, when it's vertical, a is a positive 2. You'll notice those two points are two above the vertex, just on the left and right sides. So if I had, like, you know, a negative 3, um, then I would just go down 3 from the vertical and then left and right 1 on either side there. And if it's horizontal, you're going left or right the value of A and again up and down on either side. But that's when A is a nice integer. If A is a fraction, we're going to do something a little bit different to find those additional points. Nothing changed about how we find the vertex, focus, axis, symmetry, and everything else. So we're still recognizing that h here is going to be negative 4, whereas k is going to be negative 1. Because since it's horizontal now, it's x equals the k values inside the parentheses being squared as the opposite sign. Um, our a is a negative 1 fifth. So we identify our vertex. We know it's h comma k. So it's going to be negative 4 comma negative 1. And again, it's the most common mistake students make for this part right here is not putting that in the proper order. Um, and kind of putting his negative 1 first, because you see his inside the parentheses being squared. Be very careful with that. Your focus. Now it's the x value that's adjusting by a, so it's negative 4 plus 1 over 
4 times a negative 1 fifth, comma negative 1. Because a is a fraction, that's going to get a little interesting, so we just kind of work with that fraction first. 4 times a negative 1 fifth makes it a negative 4 fifths. If I'm doing 1 divided by negative 4 fifths, that's the reciprocal of that, so I'm really saying it as a negative 5 fourths. Uh, negative 4 would really be negative 16 over 4, so I get a negative 21 fourths uh, for that focus. So I would say this is negative 21 fourths comma negative 1, or the mixed number if you want to raise negative 5 and 1 quarter comma negative 1. That's also, again, perfectly fine. Uh, for our axis of symmetry, it's the opposite variable of the equation, so it's going to be y equals the y coordinate, so y equals negative 1. And then the directrix is the same idea as the focus, but we're subtracting the 1 over 4a, and it's the same variable as the equation, so it's x equals the x coordinate point h minus 1 over 4 times a. So again, now we're getting the same idea, but rather than going to be a um, minus 5 fourths, it's going to be plus 5 fourths because we have the double negative. So it's really negative 16 fourths plus 5 fourths, which is another negative 11 fourths. Which if we want to write that as our mixed number, that would be our negative um, 2 and 3 quarters. All right, so just be careful with your arithmetic, filling in A, especially when it's not uh, necessarily a nice integer value. So plot our vertex point negative 4, negative 1. Now, we can't really use our trick with A that we were talking about in the previous one, just kind of going that distance of A to the left or the right, up or down or whatever, because it's a fraction. I certainly could go up and down, um, I'm sorry, to the left, negative one-fifth, and just go up and down one from there. You'd find you'd have a point like right about like there and like there, those two little red dots, which is kind of tough to make a graph with. So I wouldn't recommend using that. You want to generally work with nice grid points. Um, I wouldn't just also recommend picking any old random point, though, because if I picked, for example, like again, that's saying y is equal to zero, you're getting that decimal fraction kind of thing. So to pick nice numbers, you need to pick a point that's the same distance away as the fraction itself is in terms of the denominator, because then it will balance. So here, because it's a negative one-fifth, if I pick a point that's five spaces away, that will work out perfectly. So five spaces away from the negative one is a positive four. So I'm going to substitute a positive four into this equation. I'm just going to erase this up. I have it up top so I can kind of show that work there. So positive four is five away from negative one. So I'm going to say x equals negative one-fifth times four plus one squared minus four. We get a five squared, which is 25. One-fifth of 25 is going to be a negative five, and negative five minus four is negative nine. So my point is going to be x is negative nine, y is going to be a negative uh, positive four. So that's going to be right there. And based on symmetry, that's going to be the same distance away as if I had worked with um, negative 6 instead. So that's going to be this point right here. Also make sure you're careful with the symmetry idea, simply because you're used to kind of going up and down, and then it's left and right is what's symmetry on there. So here you're going left or right, and the symmetry is the up or down. And if I connect these three points to make a U, you'll kind of see that I am going to kind of hit those two little dots I did before. And there's our graph. All right. Honestly, again, you can, you can really plug in whatever points you want to plug in to the equation to get a third, second, and third point to work with. But if you're trying to make it work out nicely and plot a nice grid point, you want to pick something that's the same distance away as the fraction that's creating the parabola there. So if I had, for example, one-third in front, I'd pick a point that's three away. If I had one-fourth in front, I'd pick a point that's four away. Stuff like that, rather than just simply one away, uh, makes it a little bit easier and ensures that there is no ultimate fraction that you're trying to plot. All right, so that's it for all our different conic equations. We've talked about the circle, the ellipse, the hyperbola, and now the parabola. We're also going to explore how to classify them uh, using the general equation there and then what's called the discriminant to figure out what equation we're dealing with just by looking at the equation. Um, then depending upon the scenario, that can actually be very easy. Other ones will be a little more challenging but we're going to take a look at that next, and that'll be our last thing with uh, Unit 8. So I'll see you guys next time.